thirsty souls, listen up. First of all, I'm going to be going to the Lubavitcher Rebbe's Ohel, his resting place, tomorrow. And when I go to see the Rebbe, I take every single thirsty soul with me. So if you have a Hebrew name or an English name, doesn't really matter. Comment down below whether you want to be a millionaire or you want to find your soulmate or you just need an extra dose of blessing in your life. I take this very seriously. I will say your name there and God will give you exactly what you want and what you need. The reason that I'm going to the Ohel tonight is because it is the yard site, the anniversary of the passing of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And when I was a 15 year old, pessimistic and skeptical and moody and brooding on how much the world sucked and how everyone besides Kurt Cobain was a fake and a phony, I was really just searching for something true. And what many people spend a lifetime searching for, I came face to face with in a matter of seconds, just staring at the face of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. I, I truly remember seeing myself in the contours of his face. I often and still feel like I am sometimes looking into a pool of water and in his face I see my own reflection. I am reading Wuthering Heights right now and there's this line that literally almost knocked me over. <laughs> so beautiful and powerful. Um, when Catherine cannot describe why she loves Heathcliff so much, she just blurts out, Nelly, I am Heathcliff. And when I read that, it made me think of the frustration in not being able or trying to describe to someone what it is to see yourself reflected in someone else's face. The Rebbe is as real to me as I am to myself. The Rebbe did not want his followers to remain followers. He didn't want to be the only holy one. He wanted us to have truth written all over our faces like he did. That we would look to ourselves for inspiration and wisdom. That we would finally, once and for all, become our own leaders. He worked tirelessly so that we would one day view ourselves, look at ourselves the way we looked at him. That we would recognize holiness and sacredness and power and greatness and royalty in the lines and creases of our own faces. That we could be sufficiently connected and close to God on our own. Although the English language is one of my favorite things in the entire world, I'm coming to realize that its limits far outweigh its abilities. I am often just left speechless on Gimel Tamos, on, um, which is tonight and tomorrow, the day that the Rebbe passed away. But I can and will say firmly that um, I staunchly believe that the Rebbe did not leave the state of New York for 40 years. My parents still talk about it because he wanted us to become our own Mashiach. That we would finally, slowly but surely, wean ourselves off of other people in understanding God and trying to connect to God and be close to God and understand that everything we need is inside of us. And although I truly cannot wait to greet the Rebbe when Mashiach comes, death has had little effect on our bond. I still heed his call, I still hear his voice, and I know that he knows that his chassidim will not stop until Mashiach comes. I know that he knows that. Thirsty souls, I will see you tomorrow at the Ohel. Comment your name. It's been a while, I'm happy to be back. Thank you for being so patient. Um, and don't ever, ever, ever stop being thirsty. Stay thirsty.